Well, afternoon, afternoon to everyone. Y'all know I normally will um, do my videos the opposite way. I will usually set up the video um, and kind of talk to you guys from the other direction. So it's a little bit different this way. But, um, you know, with that being said, I'm really ready. I've been in the office all day preparing this lesson and I, I actually did not plan on doing a live teaching today okay I didn't plan on doing it I planned on uploading um, I had planned on uploading a video that we had done previously um, but I kind of felt in the in my spirit that I was supposed to do it but I really wasn't sure so um, you know long story short this morning when I got up I believe the Lord was telling me um, that we needed to do this lesson today and basically told me what we needed to be sharing about. So um, we're going to jump into it. But first, I want to just throw out a few things to you guys. Um, thank you all for being on the video. Go ahead and hit the like and share button. If you share this video to your page, it allows me to reach more people to get them this information. And this information I feel like is, is extremely needed in the dance ministry community. Um, I feel like it's applicable to any part of ministry, but many of you know me, know that I believe in staying in my lane. And so I believe that this is my lane uh, to be, um, is to deal with issues concerning the actual dance ministry. And so uh, with that being said, um, we're just going to go ahead and just jump right into it. Uh, I'm going to get some announcements and, and, and things like that. And then we'll actually get into the video. So I got everything set up on my end. I'm sorry, y'all. It took a little bit of doing as normal. But um, I want to let you guys know that we do have a YouTube channel. I am trying to reach 1,000 subscribers. And I think we're about maybe 100 and 60 people away so if you are on YouTube a simple way to help our ministry thrive and grow is to just go to the YouTube channel and press subscribe and follow so go find us on YouTube we're also on Facebook which you're watching us on we're also on Instagram uh, so go and find us on all social media outlets and subscribe and follow like what have you um, if you are not a member on our website I want to go ahead and tell you to get online, yetpraisedancecompany.com, and become a site member. When you are a site member, basically whatever we're doing, whatever we upload or put there, you get it first. Um, um, with that being said, between January and February, I do not have the, the actual date just yet, we're going to be opening up our online school of worship. And what the online school of worship is, is it is um, basically dance ministry training that you guys can take advantage of and utilize online. Um, and I don't want to so much as focus on a dance, 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 but like what we're going to talk about in today's lesson, um, this class and this online course is about promoting holiness in your everyday life. Anybody that knows me knows that I'm really big on living a holy, born-again lifestyle on a consistent basis after the music stops. You can hop, skip, leap, jump all you want, but if that holy lifestyle is not there, what good is any of your giftings? And so with that being said, we're also, during the, throughout that course, uh, we're also going to have, uh, I guess what you would call, dance training. You'll get technical training in classic ballet as well as you'll get uh, technical training uh, to use in your ministries. A lot of people that I talk to say that they become stuck or they feel stagnated in their ministry because they really don't see the room or the opportunity for growth. And that is something that breaks my heart. When I tell you it breaks my heart, it breaks my heart. So the online school of worship uh, you'll start seeing flyers and things about it, uh, but that will be opening up between January and February. But I will have uh, the information out there for you guys to find out about it. The beautiful thing about this, this online school of worship is only going to be $19.99 a month. 
okay? And uh, it's a monthly membership class. A new class will post every week. Uh, the classes range from one hour to an hour and a half. Uh, but basically, it's a class designed to help you grow and go further in dance ministry. Um, so the online dance ministry school of worship will open up between late January and early February, and it is only $19.99 a month. If you are a leader in dance ministry, I strongly suggest that you, um, you, you, you become a member of the online school of worship. Uh, with that being said, what is this Friday? This Friday is Black Friday. Amen. Everybody's going to get ready to go and do their online shopping or shopping in the stores and, and, and brave, bravely battle the crowds. I, I couldn't do it. I did it one year and literally I was just so drove because it was just, they had like 10 TVs at Walmart and 50 people trying to get them. And so literally it was just, um, it was just way, 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 way too much. And so with that being said, uh, we have a Black Friday sale that will be online. It's going live Thursday morning at 12 a.m. Uh, we've uploaded so many new things to the website. Uh, but with that, we've also uh, brought back some older things that you may never have seen before. So the website is lit right now and every day I'm adding new things to the website. Yesterday we added new choreography. Um, Today we uploaded two more uh, ebooks, which one goes with uh, a webinar that will be live on um, the live webinar will come live actual Thanksgiving uh, day. So it'll go live and you guys can check it out and see it then. But the, the name of the webinar is Gossiping Leaders. And I feel like that's another topic that we have to deal with in the dance ministry, Gossiping Leaders. And uh, that webinar, and as well as many other webinars, several online dance classes, everything's going to be on sale. If you want to buy choreography, the choreography is going to be marked down to $45. And that's for anything that is uh, pre-recorded on the website that is not for custom choreography. Also, um, all the webinars are going to be $7. All the little ebooks that we have are going to be $3. Um, uh, the, the choreography fillers video volume one and two right now are $39 each, but they're going to be $15 each for Black Friday. So that means you're going to get them for less than half, uh, less for less than the price of one. Okay, so make sure that you go to the website and when you spend $100 or more, you're going to get a free dance ministry clinic and the dance ministry clinic video is basically three hours of intensive dance training and full length choreography to its time so that is a free value um it is a a, a, a think when we priced it out the uh the value was a little bit over 150 dollars so it's a it's a great value for you guys to have that is all going to be going on on our black friday sale um so I can't think of anything else. For some of you guys that are new to um, to our channel and to our group page, um, I just want to let you guys know that I'm Rachel Frazier. I'm the owner and director of Yet Praise Dance Company. I've been active in dance ministry now for 21 years. And throughout this time, um, I've definitely learned what to do, what not to do, what works, what doesn't work. And I'm still learning and growing. But what I'm doing this for and why these resources are available to you is because I know what it feels like to be a leader and not really have somebody to help me and to train me and to cultivate me specifically in the area of dance ministry. So that is why I basically do what I do and I'm praying that you guys will be blessed by today's video. If you haven't already, I need you to get a Bible, a notebook, uh, and a pen because this is a teaching live webinar so i want you guys to go and get those resources out and we're gonna go ahead and jump into the lesson is everything okay on y'all's end with sound can y'all hear me okay let me know can you hear me all right and then we're gonna pray and we're gonna get started today's topic is dancing devils okay and oh man we're gonna just go ahead and have a word of prayer father in the name of jesus 
I give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. I thank you because today is the day that you made. You've blessed us with this day. You've given us our life, our health, and our strength. And for that alone, Lord, we honor you and we bless you. We say thank you and we will raise a hallelujah to you this morning. We exalt you and we acknowledge that you are King of kings and Lord of lords. We repent and we ask that you will forgive us. Forgive us of our sin for our lack of faith and our lack of trusting in you and your character. Forgive us for our lack of putting you first. Forgive us, oh God, for all of those things that have separated us from you. The sin that lies dormant in our heart that we choose to overlook. God, I'm asking you uh, that you would forgive us. And that you will restore us and wash us with the blood of Jesus one more time. As we dive into today's lesson, I'm asking that you would speak through me, Lord. That you would give each leader watching what they need to hear. You will give each leader watching of uh, that strength and that hope and that encouragement to persevere, to press, to go on, to move further, and to be who you have called them to be. And Lord, I thank you for an opportunity such as this. I ask that you would speak through me and that no flesh will glory in your presence, but make me sensitive at this very moment to the moving of your spirit. And I thank you for what you're gonna do. Thank you for blessing the leaders that are on this video right now. I thank you and praise you for it in the name of Jesus. All right, guys, let's get into it. If you haven't already, go ahead and like and share this video. Um, go ahead and put your questions in the comment sections. I promise that I will answer your questions once I actually complete the lesson that we're teaching. And so today, when I was uh, preparing and getting ready, I, I received the topic, Dancing Devils. And what is it that you guys think about when you first hear somebody say Dancing Devils? You know, what, what comes to your mind when you hear that? And so the thought that immediately pops up in my mind is these dancers on stage with these red satin costumes and pitchforks and they're dancing and jumping and skipping and leaping and they're just they're dancing and I know my my uh imagination is wild okay it's wild but that's what I see when I try to visualize a dancing devil but when I actually start to think in my heart and in my spirit what is this what is a dancing devil and I think I think it is people that are operating in ministry, but not delivered from habit sin, and they are fully functioning in dance ministry. So let's say that again. What I believe a dancing devil is, is a person that is functioning in full-time dance ministry, but they have not left habit sin, okay? Meaning they are sinning on a consistent basis. They know that they're doing it. They have no unction or, or, or leading of the Holy Spirit to change. Okay? And so what I want to interject here is that I'm not perfect. I'm not I'm not uh saying that I am without sin. Let me cast the let me cast a song and, and, and try to take that splinter out your eye and I got a big plank in my eye. I believe that we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But the point that I want to hammer away with is, are we living in habit sin? And habit sin is sin that you, you, you know those little things where we say, God going to forgive me, but you go ahead and you do it anyway. Because, oh, God going to forgive me. Oh, I'm going to repent about that later. I, I'm going to have a little fun right now, but God going to forgive me. And we have to be very careful with taking the forgiveness of God for granted. And so a lot of times we will bank on this forgiveness and this mercy of God and, and, and look for this greasy grace where we could just slip into sin and slip out of sin and do this and do that. And we're looking for all of these different allowances from God because, oh, God going to forgive me. And I, I believe right now that we are lacking power as the body of Christ, as the dance ministry portion of the body of Christ, because we're banking on, oh, God going to forgive me. 
And then we have the audacity to want to take on a platform in ministry, but we are living in habit sin. And some of the habit sin for some of you have become iniquity. I mean, it is deep rooted, infested sin that you have not confessed before the Lord. And so um, I just want to make this comment. I'm going to be going back and forth to my computer because that's where my notes are. Um, and I just want to interject here that, again, I am not perfect in saying that we have to be perfect. We are supposed to be striving to become Christ-like. That means every day I'm, I'm striving harder than the day before to begin to apply the different teachings of the Bible to my everyday life. And that's what I mean by striving and living a Christ-like, Christ-centered life. And I think that we have to be very careful to define what living Christ-like really, really is. So with that being said, the real focal point here for this lesson is not really about a dancing devil. Okay, that probably intrigued you to want to click on this video, and I thank God for that. But what I really want to focus in on, and what I really want to harp in on, is living a holy and righteous lifestyle. So that is the real focal point here. The focal point is to paint a clear picture of what it looks like for us as ministers of dance to live what we worship to live what we are singing uh, or are dancing about. We get these powerful, powerful songs, but our lifestyle and our character does not match the song that we're ministering to. The songs are talking about self-denial and, 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 and suffering and worshiping. And no matter what God do, I'm still going to worship. I'm still going to praise. But we're not really doing that because we are allowing sin to separate us from God. And that is where, when our sin separate us from God, we change masters. When we begin to live and habit sin, we change masters. We can't serve two masters. We can't serve God and the devil. And so a lot of us are functioning in dance ministry with no intentions and no motives of living a holy and a righteous lifestyle. And so... We're going to jump right into the scriptures because I believe that the word of God has all the power that we need. The word of God is the final authority. The word of God is going to be the thing that liberates and brings forth freedom. Not what I feel, not what I think, not what you feel and not what you think. Only the word of God can bring forth deliverance and change. Only the, the spirit of the living God can bring forth change and victory in our lives. So let's go ahead and turn to the word. I'm going to read scriptures from many different versions of the Bible because I wanted to pick the things that were clearest for us to understand. Uh, because I know I may have some uh, seasoned believers on here, but we may have uh, babes on here as well. So go ahead and turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. I'm going to give you a moment to get there. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. The only thing that I really don't like about the live video is I can't put the scriptures up there for you guys to see it. And I want you to be able to follow along with what the word says. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up the video here so I can also follow you guys and read, um, read your questions and comments as we go. Um, so while that's loading, go ahead and make sure that you turn to that portion of scripture. And it reads from the New American Standard Bible, test yourselves to see if you are in the faith. Examine yourselves or do you not recognize this about yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you unless indeed you have failed the test. One more time. Test yourselves to see if you are in the faith. Examine yourselves. So the very first thing that we need to do to make sure that we're not the devils up ministering is that we need to live in the realm of self-examination. God is not going to come and do this step for us. Okay. It says that we are supposed to examine our own selves. 
We are supposed to be the ones checking our character and behavior and comparing it to the word of God. Okay? What does that look like in, in, in our lives? Thank you, uh, thank you, Apostle, for adding the scripture. What does it look like in our everyday lives for us to examine ourselves, okay? What does that even look like? Well, to me, what it looks like is that I am checking my actions, my responses, how I deal with people, how I talk to people, and I'm, I'm, I'm examining that and comparing it to what God's words say I should do and how I should carry myself, right? And so once I do that, if it's not lining up with God's word, well, then I got to go back in and I got to do some repenting. I got to go in and ask the Lord to forgive me and not just to forgive me, but forgive me and change my mindset. In our women's Bible study at church, uh, we went doing a course about repentance and how repentance is more than just you saying that you're sorry to God, but it is really saying, Lord, I'm sorry for what I did. Change my mindset about this whole uh, issue. Like if you are battling with lying, right? If you're battling with lying and you just lie for conversation purposes, you will say, Lord, why am I lying? This lying that I'm doing is breaking your heart because the scripture says all liars shall have their part in the lake that burn with fire. So clearly God does not condone or approve of that. But we go and we examine ourselves. Lord, this lying is breaking your heart. And so I don't want to be a liar. So God, I need you to deliver me from this spirit of lying. And God, every time it come up, give me the courage to face it and even tell the person, you know what? I'm lying. Let me just back on up out of here. That's that repenting with godly sorrow and just knowing that we are breaking God's heart. I mean, it's something about knowing for me that I'm doing something that is breaking God's heart that causes me to want to turn away. Just straight up. When I realize I'm doing something that God is displeased with or God is being dishonored by or God got to turn his face from me because my sin is so blatant. I got to do some turning away. I got to do some turning away. And I think that we are not really realizing what's really going on here. That we, Because we've come, become so complacent with sin. We've come, become so comfortable with uh, habit sin and, 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 and just doing little things and saying, Oh, God, God, forgive me, that we just brush this stuff. We brush it under the rug. We brush it under the rug. And so I think it's time for us to, to come face to face with some of this stuff and stop doing it. I want to turn to Lamentations chapter 3 verse 40. And I'm going to read this from the NIV version of the Bible. It says, let us examine and test our ways and turn back to the Lord. A lot of times we get up and we minister and we do all of this stuff. But have we examined ourselves and tested our ways to see if they line up with the scriptures? You know, if you are in a relationship with a man that you are constantly having sex with and you are not married to this man, the Bible says that that is fornication. And that fornication is the only sin that destroys your body. So if you're destroying your body with sin and fornication, how can you get up and worship and dance? Those two things don't match. And so I'm not condemning you. I'm praying that I can cause you to repent because the Bible says our sin separates us from him. And so we shouldn't be touching the things of God when we're in habit sin. Now, if you're in dealing with issues that you're constantly in repentance for, you're seeking God for, that's different. But I'm talking about you laying in bed with this man, whenever you feel like you hot and need a release, and you still get up to minister. And I mean, guys, it's the stuff we got to deal with. Sex sin and sexual sins are plaguing the body of Christ. There's people involved in homosexuality and lesbianism and they get up and kick up a leg and everybody falling out and dead and screaming. And we're really conjuring up a demonic spirit to be released. 
We're not conjuring up the Holy Spirit. That was not a move of God. That was the flesh at its very finest. And so, um, I don't want to get stuck right there. Let's keep moving. Self-examination is a major part of living a holy life. Where we are turning the word of God and we are examining ourselves. And I'm doing this video today because I feel like a lot of us are not going back and examining ourselves. We get on Facebook, we judge this one, we judge that one, we say this about that one. And right now we're doing it as a church as a whole with Kanye West. We're judging to see if this man saved. I'm too busy worrying about, can I stay saved? Can I be saved? You know what I'm saying? And so I'm too busy examining my own self and, and making sure I'm living a repentive lifestyle and make sure I'm not doing these willful things against God. And that is what we have to do because the scripture tells us to examine ourselves. And so this video is all about examining our heart and examining where we are before we get up on these platforms to, to minister and use our gift, okay? Some of us might need to go put our gift up on the shelf and make sure we write with God. We need to do that, we need to do that, we need to do that. And so, knowing God more personally should develop a respect and a reverence where that we don't wanna break God's heart with our bad character. You know, it is to the point where I don't want to break God's heart because I'm gossiping about somebody. Because the thing is, it's not even about that, that person I'm talking about. If God is omnipresent and God is everywhere at once, that means God is present when I'm slandering, gossiping, lying, or backbiting about someone else. God is present when you are in the midst of that fornication or adulterous relationship, God is present when you are uh, not references, referencing his name. God is present at those very moments. And we just take that for granted. But I don't want to sin in the presence of Almighty God. I don't want to get up and, and minister before people and receive their approval. But I have been rejected by God because my lifestyle does not meet the qualifications of a minister of dance according to the scriptures. Many times I think we just don't want to go that far in Christianity. We don't want to go that far where we got to examine ourselves and work out our own soul salvation with fear and trembling. We don't want to go that far. We only want to go far enough where we're going to escape the flames of hell. But we don't want to go further to receive the rewards that God says he has for us in this life and in the lives to come. And y'all, I'm talking to me about this stuff too because anything I get on here to share, God deals with me with this stuff. God is dealing with me. Am I living holy? Am I living righteous? Am I putting him first and seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, letting everything else be added unto me? And this is what is a, a holy lifestyle is all about. It's about putting God first. And so salvation is more than going to church. Okay, I got to say this. Salvation is more than going to church. Going to church does not mean you are a saved, born-again believer more than me going into a garage makes me a car. Somebody used that little meme with, a, with the cat, and that cat, I swear that cat going to expose the heart of the church because that cat dealing with some issues that some of our pastors are not dealing with. That cat is dealing with some issues. Can somebody say amen that the cat is trying to bring forth freedom? That poor little cat being wore out right now. But the, one of the memes was the girl was saying, I am a Christian because I go to church. And the cat replies back to her, uh, well, if I go to McDonald's, do that make me a Big Mac? So you going to church does not define if you are born again. And so a lot of times we get up to minister, we're doing all this stuff, and some of us, us have not even gotten our relationship right with God whether we are a born again believer. That part. Let's go ahead and turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 31. And this particular verse, I'm going to actually read from the King James Version of the Bible. And it says, I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus, our Lord, that I die daily. Paul is saying here, that 
Every day he get up, he's telling himself, I have to die. I have to die to what I think. I have to die to my opinions. I have to die to what other people think about me. I have to die to my past. I have to die to my present. I have to die to my future. And I, I want to really be real with you guys. I'm in that place right now. I'm in that place where the Lord has me in many, many situations where I have to die to myself. And in some of those areas, I'm not dying gracefully. And what I mean by dying gracefully is letting the Lord have his way. Some of those areas, I'm still trying to defend myself. Some of those areas, I'm still trying to prove that I'm right. And when we die, and when there's a dead man laying in a casket, and we go to view that body, you could touch it, you could poke it, you could flip it, you could throw it. That dead body is not moving because there's no life there. And so what I believe the Lord is calling us to do is to die to our feelings and our opinions and our emotions and our shoulda, coulda, waters and what they did me to, and to die in such a way that when other people are doing things to us, it does not trigger a response from us. Because the only response that we have is, Lord, you allowed it, so have your way. Have your way. And so this is what I'm learning in this season of life. And my pastor has harped on this for many, many years that we die daily. We die to our flesh. We die to ourself. And so right now, you can hear the word, but if you're not being a doer, if you're not doing it, it does you no good. And so this is how we become a dancing devil when we don't take the word of God and apply it to everyday living. When you wake up in the morning, you have a choice. Are you going to entertain that spirit of depression or are you going to cast it down and start quoting the scriptures? Are you going to entertain the loneliness that you feel because you might be a single woman not involved with a relationship and you, you strongly desire a husband? You know, are you entertaining that? Are you festering on it? Are you pondering on it? Or are you saying, Lord, I choose to die to that. You have not given me that yet. I'm trusting you, but I'm not going to make that the focal point of my day and my life. I yield myself to you and I give that to you, oh God. Let's go to Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. And it says, I'm going to give you a bunch of scriptures about dying to yourself. Dying to what you think. Dying to what you feel. There's this thing right now where if the leader corrects you, it is called church hurt. And I see it everywhere. I see it in dance ministry, mind ministry. I see it in uh, praise team, churches. I, it's, it's running rampant because this is a movement of the culture. You can't correct me. It is a movement of the culture right now that you cannot acknowledge what I've done wrong because you sin and you be wrong and you do this and you do that and you just a man. And, and what that is doing is it is tainting and it is hindering us from living a holy, righteous, born-again lifestyle. God has put leaders over us that are leaders after his own heart that they might be able to train and guide us in righteousness, in holy living. The Bible said in the book of Romans, how will they hear unless they have a preacher? How will they hear and know what to do unless the preacher tells them? Yes, you can read and study on your own. Yes, you can dive into in God's word and get nuggets and information. But no, you cannot get it all on your own. Or God will not have set these people in place to be able to help you in such a way. Can somebody agree with me? Can somebody right now just go ahead and start hitting them hearts and agree with me that no, we cannot get it all on our own? Woo! The, uh... I know I'm giving a lot of scriptures, but I strongly want to encourage you guys to go and buy the notes. Okay, I can't go back because we're on a time clock, but go and buy the notes. The notes are $5.99, uh, and the link is attached above. Okay, um, but I just want to, man, man, go ahead and like and share this video while we're talking. Just go ahead on and do it. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. These are scriptures that talk about us dying dying to our wants our emotions and the, the dance ministry is such an emotional ministry 
If the leader tell you something, you take that thing so personal to heart. I just had a situation where I was I was told something and well, let me I wasn't told anything. Something happened and I didn't like the way the leader treated me by what they did. And immediately the spirit of offense came upon me. And the Lord is is even now as I do this video, he's working that thing out of me because People are people. If you know the heart of your leader, it's not to destroy you. It's not to devour you. It's supposed to be to build you up and to encourage you. But we just target them because we don't want to really deal with the issues on the inside of us. So Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 says, I am crucified with Christ. Who? What? Wait, huh? I, me, Rachel, you, you are crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith to the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. That tells me ain't no room for Rachel. Because the life that I now live, I'm living it for Christ to be seen through what I say, through what I do, through how I act, through how I treat people. Christ has to be seen. It's not your responsibility if Christ not being seen in the leader or, or in other people. It's your responsibility. It's Christ being seen through you. Let's go to Luke chapter 9, verse 23. And it says, And he said to them, All, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. We got work to do. I got to deny myself. If I'm single and don't have a husband and I'm feeling lustful, like I want to have sex, I got to deny myself. That means I got to go to praying in tongues. I got to start fasting. I got to get on my face. I got to lay prostrate. Baby, you better do whatever you got to do for, for that hot, lustful feeling of, to flee. But you better not feed it. You better not feed into your lustful desires. When, when, when somebody lie on you, you want to basically let them know they lied on you. You want to check them, confront them, or do whatever. But in some cases, you got to do Luke 9, 23 and say, let me deny myself, take up my cross, and follow Christ. Because I don't have to deal with that. You don't have to address every issue in your life. You, ooh, you do not have to address every issue that come before you. You can be uh, fighting battles and losing the war. What is the bigger picture here? The bigger picture is that Christ is glorified in my everyday life. Forget when the music on. Forget when I'm before men. That ain't what I'm talking about. I'm talking about when you see Rachel out in the street in a grocery store, in a checkout line, at the gas station, at the red light, it's Christ being glorified in my character and in my behavior. But we don't want to talk about that. I'm going to keep it real. It's Christ being glorified with how you dress. Y'all, as I scroll through Facebook this weekend, I saw so many Christian women looking like the world. I'm talking about cleavage out, skin tight clothes. There's a lot of things that I love. Anybody know me know I love fashion. My closet is stacked straight up. I got and then I got it color coordinated. I got my shoes color coordinated. I love clothes. I love shoes. I love hats. I love jewelry. I love hair. I love nails. I love fashion. I love fashion. But my good friend Damaris was talking about one time we was having a conversation and she was talking about the Nazarite anointing. The Nazarites were, were God's chosen people and the Nazarites, the Nazarites didn't do what everybody else did. And see that I believe all oh, ba 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 I believe God is calling for some of these ministers of dance 
to realize we need a Nazarite anointing. The Nazarites didn't drink wine. The Nazarites didn't go certain places. The Nazarites didn't go around dead bodies. They didn't do certain things because of the anointing that God had placed on their lives. Now, am I saying that certain fashion is wrong? No, it's not. But it all depends on what you are called to and what office and mantle God is putting on you. And because of the mantle that God has put on my life, I can't do certain things. I can't go certain places. And I, I put a post up, and I'm going to address this here. There is secular music that I love. Straight up. But because of the office and the anointing and the calling on my life, I cannot have no communication with it. Now, I know Christians believe that secular music is okay because we got Christian music artists that have collaborated with the world. There's no way in hell I'm doing a collaboration with Nicki Minaj. I'm going to preach the gospel to you for you to repent, but I'm not going to have a collaboration with you. I'm not going to do it. Because my linking up and my yoking with you go cause somebody else to stumble. That's where we got to do. Luke 9, 23, it says, let him come after Christ, take up his cross, deny itself. Y'all, what are we doing? The church don't have any power. Your dance don't have no power because you are worldly and fleshly. Just go ahead and report my video, delete it, do whatever, but I, baby, I don't care. Let's move on. Galatians, I ain't even got to the heart of this lesson. I ain't even got to the heart of the matter. I have not gotten to the heart of the matter. We are living in this lukewarm state. And then we want to get up and minister to God's people. And I, 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 I don't understand that. And, and I'm, I'm telling y'all, I shared this on another video. The Lord convicts me about th the least little thing. I got up to minister one time and I had not spent time saturating in the music. I had not spent time saturating in the presence. I had not spent time feasting at the table in the word. And I got up to minister. I was tired. I mean, I barely made it through the song. But on the outside, the people that were watching me minister, they was clapping, they was shouting, they was, they was going for it. The video got like 4,000 views on Facebook. And the Lord showed me his displeasure. Because it doesn't matter what the people do. It doesn't matter the outward showing from man. It doesn't matter how many views and likes I got. It doesn't matter how many shares I got. If the Lord didn't like it, if the Lord didn't share it, if the Lord wasn't pleased with it, it was a lame sacrifice that when my works get tried by the fire, baby, that thing going to be burnt up and will not amount to nothing. I get no credit with God for that on Judgment Day. And we got to be real about this stuff. We've all missed it, but we don't have to miss it. We don't have to uh, stay in the state that we're in. The Lord is calling some of you today through this video, baby. He's calling you to come up higher. He said there's enough of that lukewarmness. Uh, somebody told me that they pastor told them that uh, it's not black and white. There are shades of gray. The Bible is black and white. It said I'd rather you be hot or cold because if you are lukewarm, I am going to vomit you out of my mouth. That tell me there is no room for gray areas. Either you red hot, hot on fire for the things of God, or you are cold. You are a sinner that want nothing to do with the things of God. But when you get into that lukewarm state of being wicked, where you go to church and you do the things of the world, God said, I'm going to vomit you out of my mouth. In other words, you make me sick. But this is what we are doing and we're ministering and we're going forth to do all these things. Hop, skip, leap, jump, turn, kick, boom. And then you pick these emotional songs that stir up the people's emotions. But no deliverance is taking place. There's no deliverance taking place. 
When you get up to minister, you should wreck an environment or an atmosphere to where people are saying, what must I do to be saved? Because you ministered and danced and convicted me. That's the kind of music you need to be picking. That's the kind of songs we need to be finding or songs that's going to shift atmospheres. So when the pastor or the speaker gets up, the, the, the atmosphere is already conducive for salvation and deliverance because we've done our part. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. Galatians chapter 5, verse 24 says, And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. Baby, if you're not crucifying yourself on a day-to-day -day basis, you don't belong to Christ. Because Christ suffered and was, was, was crucifying his flesh all the time. Galatians chapter 5 verse 24. Y'all, I gotta throw this out here. I gotta throw this out here. I got we the church has lost its power because we are no longer standing for holiness. The Bible, this scripture bothers my soul. It says that we will do, you and I will do greater works than the disciples did. We, you and I are supposed to do greater works than the disciples that were with Jesus did. They raised the sick. They, I mean, they healed the sick. They raised the dead. They had power. They was casting out demons. When was the last time you did those things? They was bringing thousands of people to Christ. Twelve men turned the world upside down. Count Jesus made 13. When was the last time you witnessed to somebody at the grocery store, but you want to go minister on, on somebody's altar? When? When was the last time you shared your faith and led somebody through the sinner's prayer without nobody watching you? Mark chapter 8, verse 35. Mark chapter 8, verse 35 says, For whosoever will save his life shall lose it but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels the same shall save it we're not trying to lose our life we into self-preservation our own comfort and and then we want to get up and minister in that condition y'all something wrong right there something wrong right there when we can get up and 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 then then while we up there ministering, we want to cry and snot and all that. Girl, save that for your prayer closet. When you get up there to minister, you need to be pulling somebody through. At that time, it's not your time of ministry. You should have got on your face in the practice or in your prayer closet or in your time with God. But when you get on that platform or that altar, you're pulling other souls. You ain't got time to be crying and snotting over your issue. Oh, don't message me. Y'all already know. Don't message me. Do not message me. I said what I said and that is what it is. Now, I'm not saying that we cannot minister out of our brokenness. But when you get up there, well, how would you like it if your pastor got up to preach and started crying about all his problems? When your pastor get up to the preach, he's preaching a word to get you liberated and set free. He not worrying about his problems at that time. Take a note right there. I truly believe that this is where most believers draw the line. And I will strive to be holy as he is holy stops. We're not denying ourselves. We're not going to uh, live these types of lives. And so we have... Many opinions, many dreams, many goals, many desires, many aspirations. We have all of this stuff going on. But is this what the Lord wants for us? Do the Lord want us in this place where we want all this stuff? Or do the Lord want us at a place where we are seeking his face and his righteousness? He said when we do that, then everything else is going to be added. When we get on our face and start praying about it instead of gossiping about it and praying about it instead of posting on Facebook that's the most immature thing that you could do is post your problems on Facebook 
But then the next week, so Wednesday, you posting about your problems and your issues on Facebook and who said what and who did what. And then Sunday, you want to post yourself dancing. Let me just go on with the lesson. In most cases, we take the road of least resistance and we loathe, we bathe, we saturate ourselves in self-preservation. But realize that in self-preservation and in those conditions, we will never produce fruit. When we are looking out for ourselves, when we are protecting ourselves, you are not going to produce fruit. What is producing fruit? You're not going to have love. Galatians 5.22. You're not going to love unconditional. You won't have no joy. Won't have no peace. You can't suffer long with nobody because you only worry about yourself. You're not gentle in how you deal with nothing. You slap, you rough, you quick at the tongue. You got something to say about everything. You have no faith. No faith to believe that God can come through and make a way and fight for you and defend you. You're not meek. You don't have no control under pressure. You don't have no temperance. You ain't patient with nothing. You want it right now. And I'm saying this because, y'all, I've been here. I fight this on a daily basis. When I get up in the morning, I'm like, Lord, today, help me to die and produce fruit. I'm not telling y'all I got it all together. But I tell you one thing, I'm striving and I'm pressing toward the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. And I'm not going to settle until I get there. We have to get to a place where we're no longer comfortable being average. We got to get to a place where you're not satisfied with the, with the mundane. You're not satisfied going to church. You're not satisfied that when you get up to dance, people be shouting and falling out and hollering, Minister, you shouldn't be satisfied with that because they shouldn't have time to holler at you and say, Minister, be to you because they should be slain on the floor because you brought them into the presence where they're getting delivered. You brought them into the place where that healing is taking place. You brought them into the place where they're really getting liberated and set free. But you can't do that if you're a devil. You cannot do it if you are devil. And what I mean by that is we, we put on this face for ministry, but when we deal with other people, we don't know how to handle them right. I ain't getting nobody to say nothing right there. Y'all should be blowing that screen up, hitting hearts, because I know that's right. Because I've done it. I've been in that position. I've been in that place, y'all. My God, my God, y'all need to start tagging people in this video that need this word right now. This not my word, this God's word. You need to start tagging as many people as you can in this video so they can hear this message. You need to be sharing this on every page, on every post, because somebody need this deliverance right now. Somebody need to stop playing with God and getting up there playing with ministry because you want to be seen and you want to invite and you want your face on the next flyer. Baby, you're not going nowhere from here. My God, if the Lord, if the Lord don't promote you and make a way for you, you don't need that door open. You're not even ready to deal with the level of warfare that's going to come with this. The moment my face got on a flyer, all hell started breaking loose. I almost don't be wanting to share the stuff because of the problems that come. The fight and the attack that come. Because your face on the flyer. I, I, I'm going to tell y'all this. My cash app is up there in the link. And my PayPal is on, on the link. If you believe the Lord is speaking to you and you want to sow a seed, please do that. I'm going to throw that in there because I believe in all the Bible, sowing and reaping and everything. So we have to get to a place, y'all, that we're not acting like bastard children. We got to get to a place where we're not acting like vagabonds and, and stepchildren. We, you and I, are supposed to be a royal priesthood, a chosen generation, a holy nation. So if we are that, why are we acting like sinners and paupers, beggars? Why are we acting like spiritual vagabonds? 
walking around here jealous and envious and gossiping and backbiting and lying. Why? Why are we hating on each other? Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 says, But you are a chosen race a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession so that you may proclaim his excellencies of him that called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. That's the problem. You have not come out of darkness. If you're still having sex with somebody you're not married to, you're still living in darkness. You have not come out. So you can't be the royal priesthood. You can't be the chosen generation because you're still lingering in darkness. I know this not no popular message. I know I'm not going to get a bunch of likes. I know I'm not going to get a bunch of shares. But some of y'all need to replay this video for your dance ministry. This week practice need to be this video. This week rehearsal need to be this video so that way they ain't got to pick on you and say you calling them out. Let me call them out. Let me call them out. Don't, don't let people deceive you into thinking that it don't take all of this to be holy. And it don't take all of this to be righteous. Baby, it take all of this and more. I haven't even scratched the surface of living holy. We're talking about eternal life, y'all. We are talking about eternity and where your soul is going to be for eternity. This goes beyond dance ministry. This goes beyond the crowd. This is personal. If this is not personal to you, how you live your life, how you walk before Christ, if it's not personal before you, stop ministering. Oh, we got to begin to do all the verses that I, I just mentioned and I just gave. You got to start living in the realm of I die daily. I'm taking up my cross today and following you. And it's not easy. I'm not going to sit on this video and tell you it's easy. That's why the Bible said count the cost before you put your hands to this plow. Count the cost. Are you willing to pay the price? Lord, some of us are ministering, but we're not paying the price. And you're offering up strange fire before God. So, so you might be saying right now, you can't judge me. Because you know that's the big thing, the church. The church said you can't judge me. You can't judge nobody. I ain't even going to go there. But let's just go right now and let's just look at the Ten Commandments. I'm not judging you. God's word about to do that. We're going to look at the Ten Commandments. Yes, I know we are not under the law. We're under grace. But the Bible says we wouldn't even know what sin is unless the law was given. Okay, yes, we have grace and mercy through Jesus Christ and we can repent and ask for forgiveness. But... We got to know what sin is because right now the lines are blurred. The homosexuals and the lesbians are not sinners. The Bible say that they are sinners. He destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah for it. Romans chapter 1 verse 19 through 23 or 24 talks about uh, the, that when a man lies with a man, he is defiling himself. He is in sin. Nobody going to make me believe no different. If you have a sex with somebody you're not married to, you are a sinner. You are, a, you are a fornicator. If you are a liar, a gossiper, a backbiter, a backstabber, you're in sin. If you hold an unforgiveness and bitterness in your heart, that is sin. In Exodus chapter 20, we are literally going to go through verse 1 through 17. Exodus chapter 20, verse 1 through 17, I'm going to read from the King James Version. And it says, And God spake all the words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought you out of the land of Egypt, the house of bondage. Pause and see lot. God is saying, I am the God that brought you out of sin. Egypt represents sin, bondage, oppression. Okay? God brought you out of bondage for what? For you to still... 
uh, be the same way. God brought you out of bondage for you to still lie, still cheat, still, still be a thief. God brought you out of bondage for that. Salvation not more than that to you. Next verse. Thou shall have no other gods before me. Have Do you have gods, other gods before him? What do I mean by that in this modern day culture? Are you putting yourself in your own comfort before God? Are you putting your emotions before God? This is, that could be a form of idolatry. If you only worry about what affect you and not the next person, that is idolatry. Self is more important. Or you only worry about you and yours. I'm going to give mine. No, we're supposed to be servants. We're supposed to be the ones that are sacrificing our lives. Laying our lives down for somebody else. That's what the whole gospel is about. Thou shalt not make any uh, graven images or any likeness of any things that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in water under the earth. Okay, what graven images are you making? This basic Christianity, this the Ten Commandments. What graven images are you worshiping? What images, what idols have you put and held in your heart? Some of y'all worshiping these celebrities. Y'all gonna fight for Beyonce? And this girl say in her verse that she take the pages of the Bible, roll it up, and stick it in her vagina to use it as a tampon. But the Christians, the Christians are defending her. What graven images have you made? Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. You serve them when you listen to them. You serve them when you promote them. Oh, I know I'm messing up your religion, baby, but I don't care. The word of God is what we're going to stand by and be judged by. You can click off the video. You can do all of what you want. But when you stand before God, heaven and earth going to pass away. But the word going to stand. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon their children to the third and fourth generations of all them that hate me. Mm, you don't even realize you laying up a curse for your children and your children's children because you can't do what the scriptures say and let that foolery go. You can't do what the scriptures say and die to yourself and stop worshiping yourself and how you feel and what you think. He says, so guess what? I'm going to visit that curse to your children, your children's children, up to the fourth generation because you don't want to do what God say. Oh, I ain't getting no likes, no hearts, no nothing, but I'm going to say what the words say and I don't care how you feel about it. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep the commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. We do that all the time. Oh my God. Did she really just do that? That is taking the name of the Lord in vain. Oh my God. God's name is holy. God's name is righteous. God's name is sovereign. Why are we throwing his name around like that? And showing mercy, I said that, okay. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that take his name in vain. I'm going to just keep it moving. I'm going to keep it moving. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath day of the Lord. It is thou shall not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy maidservant, nor thy manservant, nor thy cattle, nor the stranger that's within the gates. But in six days the Lord made the heaven and the earth and the sea, and that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Are we honoring that? All I'm doing is pulling the Ten Commandments right now, just to show you, examine yourself. Y'all, mm, I'm doing that right now. I'm examining myself. Yesterday I got up and I was about to start working and doing all of this stuff and I ended up doing it. I'm not saying I think it's got to be a balance. It's got to be a balance. But we got to be mindful. I'm not talking about obey the law here. 
I'm talking about the law is here to let us know what sin is. So y'all can finish reading that to yourselves all the way to verse 17. There's only three or four more verses to go. But Romans chapter 3, verse 20, and I'm going to read it from the Living Bible, says, Now do you see, no one could ever be made right in God's sight by doing what the law commands. All them scriptures I just read, you're not going to be made right by doing all of that. That's there to show us that we what sin is. It says, for we know of God's laws, the clearer it becomes that we are not able to obey them. The law serves to show us that we are sinners. When you know that you are a sinner, you live in the realm of repentance. I ain't getting nobody to like that. If you are a sinner, if you live in a, if you know that I'm a sinner, saved by grace that causes you to live differently not the sinner saying oh well since i'm a sinner anyway let me just go sleep with so and so let me go do this let me smoke that weed let me drink that liquor not in that case that's not what i'm talking about i'm talking about i'm aware that jesus died for my sin to be forgiven jesus died that i could be washed and cleansed from my sin and my habit and my old ways are you violating your conscience? You know that feeling you get when you've done something wrong? People say that's their conscience. I wanna uh I wanna I wanna I wanna beg you to 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 uh, uh uh I wanna beg you to not say your conscience but say the Holy Ghost. That is the Holy Ghost trying to warn us. A lot of times when I'm about to do something, I can feel like uh-uh, that ain't right. And when I feel like I'm not right, that little check is the opportunity where I get to make the decision on how I proceed. Am I going to still go and do this even though I got that little check that this might not be right? Or am I going to uh, yield and do, some, and do it anyway and give in to my fleshly desire? Does God really receive that repentance when we say, oh, I'm going to just do it and say, God, forgive me? I don't know. The scripture said that God forgives us to separate our sin as far as the east is from the west. But do you really want to be put in a position where you habitually sin for God to forgive you? I don't like to play them. I can't take that kind of chance with my soul. So how should we live? We should live lives seeking to please God with everything we say and with everything that we do. With everything we say, with everything we do, we should be seeking to please the Lord. Romans chapter 12 verse 2 says in the King James Version, Hello my love, it says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. It says our minds become renewed when we spend more time with God. When I spend time in his presence, when I spend time on my face, when I'm walking throughout my day, Lord, what is it that you want from me? Lord, how should I handle the situation? Lord, forgive me. I should have said that better to that person. Lord, help me. And then... I not only say that to God, but then I go back to the person and I say, look, I, I, I feel like I didn't handle you right. I shouldn't have handled that like that. Can you forgive me? I had a situation just recently where I was clowning with somebody and I, and I referred to somebody's child as being bad. I was like, yeah, it was a little bad self. And the Holy Ghost convicted me and said, you was out of order. Now we clowning. Everybody laughed it off and walked away. But then the next, the, all that week, the Lord dealt with me. So when I got back with that same exact group of people, I had to tell them, y'all, I should not have said that. I'm wrong. <coughs> for some of y'all, that's not no big deal. But my Bible tell me that I'm going to give an account for every idle word I speak. So if I'm saying a bunch of dumb stuff and nonsense that's not profitable for anything, that's not building up anybody or edifying the kingdom, why are we saying it? I'm trying, I'm trying. I got a little bit more to go, a little bit more. Thank y'all for laboring with me. 
and for being on this video. Let's turn to Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, and we're going to also read that from the Living Bible. It says, above all else, guard your affections, for they influence everything else in your life. You've got to guard your heart. You got to watch what you're putting inside of yourself because that's what's coming out. What are you watching on TV? What are you listening to? What kind of conversations are you having? What are you putting before your eyes? This is how we guard ourselves to be holy. And when we start living holy, we produce holy actions. I'm, I'm running with this. I'm running with this. In the Message Bible, the same verse is Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23 through 27. In the Message Bible reads, Keep vigilant. Watch over your heart. That's where life starts. Don't talk out both sides of your mouth. Avoid careless banter, white lies, gossip. Keep your eyes straight ahead. Ignore the sideshow distractions. Watch your step and the road which stretch out smooth before you. Don't look to the left or the right. Leave evil in the dust. Leave evil in the dust. The Bible, this is how we become holy. This is instructions. The Bible is the basic instructions before leaving earth. This is how we live holy. We guard our heart. If it's not lining up with the scriptures, don't have no part with it. I'm screaming over here. We got work to do. We got work to do. This is how we have become dancing devils because we're not working our soul salvation with fear and trembling. We're not taking the word of God and applying it to our everyday lives. We're not looking into the perfect law of liberty, examining ourselves, seeing what manner of man I am, you are. I don't have to examine you. You should be busy examining your own self. Let's go to Romans chapter 13, verse 14. And this verse we're going to read in an easy to read version. It says, but be like the Lord Jesus Christ. So that when people see what you do, they will see Christ. Don't think about how to satisfy your desires of your sinful self. This is how we live holy. You're saying, how do I live holy? This is telling you. But be like Jesus Christ. Be like Christ. So that when somebody see you get up to minister, they don't even see you anymore. They see the power of the Holy Spirit that have consumed your life because this is how you practice living. Before you get on the altar to minister, before you go dance. All right, this is it. This is the end of the lesson. So if you got questions, go ahead and start typing in your questions. To sum all of this up, in this lesson, every day, each moment of our lives, we have to live Christ-focused. We got to be centered on Christ. Our mind got to be stayed on Christ. Our mind got to be, Lord, what would Jesus do? Remember that little fad, what would Jesus do? That is the truth. When I'm talking to you and you making me angry, I got to think, what would Jesus do? When you done lied on me, I got to think, what would Jesus do? When you done treated me like a fool and made me look dumb and embarrassed me before others, I got to say, Lord, what would Jesus do? Stop making room for the comforts and making provision for the flesh. Don't make no room for the flesh and its provisions. We got to start living in a place where we repent and have that godly sorrow that we realize this action broke God's heart. I don't care what nobody else think about it. I don't care how nobody else justify it. I don't care what nobody else allowed to do. I know for me it broke God's heart and I ain't doing it no more. Wake up in the morning and get before God. Stop sleeping late. Wake up early and get on your face. Stop making excuses that you're too busy. Y'all, we got to do better. We got to do better than what we're doing. And that's what this video is all about. I'm going to offer a word of prayer. If you need prayer for anything that I mentioned in this video, go ahead and drop it in the comments. I can see your comments on the computer right here. Uh, I will pray for you guys while I'm on this video. I will do it. But I, I, I want to encourage you guys. This, this is not the season 
everybody talking about for the year 2020 have fresh vision fresh perspective baby won't you try a fresh life of repentance a fresh life of repentance if you need prayer for anything quickly 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 drop it in the comment section of this video uh, but I am asking you I'm challenging you today to live don't live like a devil and then get up and use your gift and you, nobody can accuse you of what you're doing because this is something between you and God. But you can accuse your own self. If your lifestyle that you put out there don't match. I'm asking you right now, if this video has been a blessing for you, that you will go and sow a seed. You can sow a seed via cash app. That's dollar sign Rachel Ready. R-A-C-H-E-A-L Ready. I'm going to... um. Put that in the comment section. Um, if you want to sow a seed, go ahead and sow a seed. Um, you can also do it through our uh, online giving link through um, through our uh, website. I'm going to put that on there. You can also give at that outlet, okay? Um, but what I'm asking you to do, if, it was, if the word was a blessing to you and you're like, man, this is just what I needed, sow a seed. This video was free. It didn't cost you nothing. It didn't cost nothing at all. It was free. I'm sorry, y'all. My thing doing something crazy. You know how it is. Electronics want to add up, uh, mess up. Um, if you want the notes, all of my notes in detail about what I said in this video, uh, which many of you consistently call me and ask me for the notes, um, you can get those notes at the link above. The notes are only $5.99. Um, so go ahead and uh, you can get those notes. I'm actually, I put the link for the online giving in the comment section of this video. I'm also going to put right now the link for uh, the notes where you can go right there and you can, uh, you can get the notes and you can go back over this again. I charge every one of y'all on this video right now to tag people in this video that needed to hear this don't be stingy and keep this to yourself i challenge some of y'all to go and play this in your rehearsal when you have your next dance rehearsal go play this video because if it help you it's gonna probably help your group and your team mind you if you're not the leader of the group you need to get permission and you need to ask first um i got one prayer request that says hey sister rachel would you pray and see if it's possible that we can fast together as a dance corporate fast for the ones who would like to join? Yes, I definitely will pray about that. I am going to be doing some uh, some corporate fasting in the new year that I will put out there. Uh, but yes, we will pray about that. Um, it says, I would love to fast with you. Let me know when. Very good. If, if there are some of you that would like to go ahead and fast with my sister, uh, uh, is it Dina or Deanna? Uh, go ahead and let her know that you will join her on that fast. Are there any questions about the lesson from today? My God, Apostle, thank you. Because many people don't realize that the outpouring is great. And the attack that comes after this is even greater. It is even greater. Um, so again, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and chime your questions in right now and I'll address those. Just as a reminder, I have a Black Friday sale that starts Friday morning at 12 a.m. All the choreography is going to be $45. Uh, all the webinars are going to be marked down to $7. All the online dance classes, I think those are 10 or $7, something like that. But basically everything on the website is on sale. We've added a lot of items to the website so that you guys can shop and enjoy. Um, but instead of giving your Black Friday money to the department stores, why don't you sow into your own ministry by getting resources that can help you? Uh, so please go to the website, getpraisedancecompany.com. Sow a seed in if today's video blessed you. Or you can do it through the Cash App. That's dollar sign Rachel Ready. R-A-C-H-E-A-L. Ready. R-E-A-D-Y. It's no, don't. I don't have people send me a dollar. A dollar blesses me just as much as a hundred or a thousand. Because it's, it's giving in love. Um, so don't say, oh, I don't really have anything to give. 
you know, do what you can. Uh, also, uh, get the notes. The notes from this webinar is only $5.99. Get the notes, okay? Uh, the, that's all I can tell you guys. I, I appreciate you all being on this video. I appreciate um, the love and support that you give our ministry, Yet Praise Dance Company. Uh, we got a lot of things in the work. The last thing I want to leave you with, uh, starting in February, the end of January, we will be opening uh, an online school of worship. So basically how I talked today and what I shared on today is what we will be doing on the online school of worship. Uh, also, you'll be learning dance and technical skills. A lot of people message me and text me and call me and tell me that they feel like they are stuck in the place that they're in with their present dance ministry. This online school of worship is all about growing and expanding uh, what God has called you to do as far as dance ministry. And so if you are uh, blessed by what we've done here, this is just going to, it's going to be another level with the online school of worship. And guess what? It's only going to be $19.99 a month. That's it. Four classes a month. Every Monday, a new class is going to post. We've actually started building a website for it. So everything is getting prepared. Uh, we are going to go into production to start recording those videos this week for those classes. So $19.99 a month. This is not going to be a six-week program or a six-month program. This is going to be an ongoing program because the Lord has not given me a release to have an end date because we should always be growing and, and, and thriving for more. We never get to a place where we arrive. Amen.